O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, everyone, for, to our Mass this morning, particularly those of you who are continuing to watch us on live stream. We come before the Lord with joy at his goodness and his love, placing our faith and hope in him. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our works. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai, at Horeb avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to re-establish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death, our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime, he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him, flesh was brought back into life. In life, he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the Lord, Lord you just. just. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. 
Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world. The earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught. All gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice Rejoice in the the Lord, Lord, you just. just. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, in praying, do not babble on like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord's Prayer has been referred to as a perfect prayer. It is the only prayer that we know of that Jesus actually taught to his disciples. And it's a prayer that contains the three greatest virtues, the theological virtues. The one St. Paul described in this way, in the end, three things last, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. This prayer is the pivotal center of the Sermon on the Mount. And this prayer is made up of seven petitions that call us to live in faith and hope and love. The first three petitions are a statement of faith by the one who is praying this prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now to hallow doesn't mean to make God's name holy because God's name is already holy. He's the holiest of all names. But this petition asks that the name of God be recognized by everyone as holy. For all God's people to put faith in God's holiness, to fulfill his plan of salvation, faith. Then thy kingdom come. This petition calls us in faith to submit to God's kingdom. God's kingdom, to allow God to reign in our heart, that we follow God's will because of our faith in God. Then the third petition, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This third petition sums up the faith placed in the first two petitions. It is joining the angels and the saints whose faith led them to obedience to God's will, unlike Lucifer and the other angels who did not have faith in God and, as we read in the book of Revelation, were cast out of heaven. As we read in the book of Habakkuk, that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the Lord's glory as water covers the earth, that all of the earth will be filled. That's our faith. We believe that God's presence is shot through the entire world. Now, the next two petitions express our hope in God to give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. 
And these two petitions express confidence and hope that God will give us the material sustenance that we need in life. We place our hope in God that he will never forsake our physical needs, but also our hope is that the Lord will sustain our spiritual life through the forgiveness of our sins, thereby gaining for us eternal life. That is our hope. Each time we celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation, we place our hope in God's mercy and forgiveness of our sins. And without this hope, we would fall into despair. The next petition calls us to believe, calls the believer to imitate the love and mercy of God as we forgive those who trespass against us. We recall the parable of the unjust servant. Remember, he had had this huge amount that he owed to his master, and his master forgave him that debt. But then one of his fellow servants asked to have his much smaller debt forgiven by this by servant, and he would hear of none of it. He did not imitate his master in showing love. We are called to model the love that has been showered upon us, the Lord's unconditional love. Jesus forgave his persecutors from the cross, and we are to forgive those who do us harm. We are to imitate the love and the mercy of Christ. Now this perfect prayer begins with these words, our Father. It not only reveals our relationship with God, but these words also reveal our relationship with one another. The Lord is our Father, our Father. We are a family. We are all children of God. And all people deserve love and respect. And it is through faith, hope, and love that we witness that we are a true child of God. And by living this perfect prayer of Jesus, we grow in the virtues of Jesus. And as we reflected on Tuesday, the words of St. Louis de Montfort, the Christian must always have before his eyes the life and virtues of Jesus Christ, so as never to say, think, or do anything which is not in conformity with his model. The faithful can become like their divine master if they reverently study and imitate the virtues of Jesus which are shown in the mysteries of his life. When we do not have the right words to pray, and many times we just don't have the words, it's not a bad thing to turn to the Lord's Prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. It's a perfect prayer. And we are reminded of how we are to live as children of God. Because this prayer, in this prayer, we present our faith, hope, and love before God in imitation of Jesus. And this is how we become perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. The Lord has taught us his prayer, and so now we ask the Lord to listen to our prayers of petition. And what are your prayers? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our prayer.
for the repose of the soul of Fred Porter, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all of our deceased relatives and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask for Mary's intercession in taking our prayers to the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice in your hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his sake. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John, his auxiliary, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reminder, if you'd like to have your fathers, whether they're living or deceased, remembered in Father's Day Masses this month, you'll find envelopes and Father's Day cards at the doors of the church in the front and the back. Also, just a reminder that, we're, that you exit from the side rows, side aisles, and come forward, and then don't cross over. If your car is parked over here and you're over here, please just go around the, the, the church. We ask you to leave by the nearest door. We're trying to keep everybody safe and keeping the, the, this virus from spreading at all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.